Good morning, everybody. It is a cold one here in Michigan. I don't know if you can see this, but... Oh yeah, you can see your breath. Um, we are gonna go ahead and grab some kale for some breakfast, and today we're gonna be talking about mung beans. 40 degrees here this morning, and I am so thankful that I still have um, cold weather hardy kale. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip some for breakfast this morning. I will admit that I am going through a little bit of um, gardening, grieving, if you will. I miss coming out in the warm mornings, watching the sun come up and gathering tomatoes or cucumbers or beans or whatever was right from, you know, overnight to ready for the picking. I am very thankful that I still have this kale one, it's delicious. Two, it gets even sweeter when the temperatures drop like it is right now and gets cold. So let's go ahead and harvest some of this and go in and talk about mung beans. Okay, you guys, so we are back from outside and whoo, very chilly here on this October day. We have our big bowl full of super healthy kale. Um, I'm going to put just a little bit of pink Himalayan salt all over the top. And then I am going to grab some water out of my water purifier and fill up the bowl. And the reason that I do this is one, to go ahead and clean the kale, and two, the salt is going to detour any slugs or bugs. But I don't wanna eat with breakfast. So let's go ahead, get our cast iron skillet all heated up, and then we can talk about mung beans. So something that's really important to us since we live in the city and we are trying to be as conscious and mindful as possible is to take our scraps and to compost them. Now, ideally, we would have chickens, but we're not allowed to have chickens in our city. So we compost. evidence-based information. So let me share some evidence-based nutritional facts about mung beans with you. Number one, they are immune boosting. They're super high in vitamins A, B, C, D, and K. Number two. All right, next up, they're rich in fiber, which can aid in digestion and help regulate your blood sugar. Number three. Classified as a superfood, they are completely rich in antioxidants, which can help fight cancer. Number four. All right, y'all, next up, they are an anti-inflammatory. So if you suffer from arthritis, achy bones, or joints, you wanna make sure that you're having your mung beans because they'll help with inflammation. Number five. Did you know that consuming mung beans can help lower your cholesterol? Who knew? And for all of you ladies that are expecting number six. All right, this next one is near and dear to my heart. Since previously I was a midwife and we're serving expecting families or families who are looking to expand their families, 
I would always tell them that they needed to focus on increasing their intake of folate. Mung beans are extremely nutrient dense in folate. Now know the difference between folic acid, which is the synthetic compound, and actual folate, which is the natural compound. Your body breaks them down a little bit differently. Unfortunately, in the United States, most prenatal vitamins contain folate. <laughs> If you have factor V Leiden disorder, MTHFR, um, or any other genetic alleles, you break down components of certain um, synthetic compounds differently. The importance of folate in pregnancy or in your consideration to conceive is that it helps decrease neural tube defects in your baby. So make sure, please make sure to eat those mung beans if you're pregnant or considering to get pregnant because they have the actual folate not folic acid. Number seven. They are low in fats and calories and they help to discourage you from overeating because they're so filling. You guys, they are completely delicious. All right, you guys, number eight. So we already know that antioxidants are great for aging. They can improve your skin health, they decrease your wrinkles, but let's talk about how antioxidants support the nervous system and boost brain function. Eat those mung beans, you guys. Next up, they are low in fats and calories and they help to discourage you from overeating because they're so filling. You guys, they are completely delicious. Last but not least, they are so easy to grill, you guys. So come on into the kitchen with me. These are mung beans. We buy our organic mung beans in bulk from our local bulk food store. So let me show you how easy these are to make. You take one cup. You take that one cup. You go ahead and scoop your mung beans out. I like to use a funnel when I put mine in and then put it into either a glass mason jar or a bowl. There's your one cup. Next up, I'm gonna take some of my purified water and put it into my automatic kettle to add some hot water into a mason jar. Then I'm going to add cool water because you want your water to be slightly warm, not hot. This water is gonna cover the mung beans you just put in your other jar. So we pour it in. Just like that. We wanna cover it up by at least double. So here's our mung beans, here's our water, and then I have these sprouting mason jar lids that have a mesh on the top of them. They're not required. You can use um, some cheesecloth, a napkin, a coffee filter. Basically, you just don't want anything to spill into your mung beans. Next up, you want to find a dark place to store your mung beans. I use this cabinet up here. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in there close it and forget about it for the next 24 hours. Okay, it's been 24 hours. Go ahead and drain off that liquid. You'll notice that your mung beans look puffy and as if their tails are starting to untuck. Grab a colander, line the bottom of it with paper towel, empty your mung beans into there, get them soaked again with that clean water, put a catch bowl underneath, weight the top down with a plate and fermenting weights or whatever you have to add weight. Tuck it into a cabinet, close the door and wait another 24 hours. This is what they look like after another day. You're going to want to water them in the morning and in the evening. Day three, those sprouts are growing. The weight comes into play and helps push the energy back into the mung bean. If you don't have weight on top of it, you'll just have a longer and thinner mung bean. Okay, who's ready for the big reveal? So like I showed you guys in the pictures before, I weight the top of my mung beans. I actually use fermenting weights. If you don't have fermenting weights, you can fill a mason jar with water. You can use a cast iron skillet press. You can use a heavy book or a pot, something that's gonna create resistance on the top of your mung beans. So let me go ahead and remove my plates. 
So let's do a quick reminder of what we started with. Here are what our dried teeny tiny little mung beans started out looking like. And then we watered them in the morning with purified water. And then we watered them at night with purified water. Now the extra water is going to filter down this colander into the catch bowl. You can use a muslin piece of fabric on the top. You can use a cheesecloth like I'm using, or you can use a paper towel if you have nothing else. But here we go. Dun, da, da, da. Mung beans. Let me go ahead and move my fermenting weights. I keep my fermenting weights in my cheesecloth in like a vintage sewing drawer. So that's it. That's today's video on mung beans. So if you think that you have a black thumb, if you kill house plants, if you think that you don't have room to garden, all it takes is a jar, some mung beans, some water, a colander, some cheesecloth or paper towel, a bowl and a plate. And four days later, after it's been tucked away in a dark space, you get an amazing amount of food that's so super good for you. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Remember to give us a like. It's really important. It only takes you a second to click that thumbs up button. If you like these videos, make sure to subscribe, turn on those notification bells, and share this with some friends. In closing, I hope you guys learned something today from this video. I hope it inspires you to know that you do have options to grow. You don't need soil. You don't need a bunch of fancy things. Just the stuff that we talked about today. Take steps towards sustainability and independence. Decrease your dependency on a broken food system. Have fun. Do this with your family and get growing, you guys. Have a lovely day. And from my home to yours, many blessings.